The vast majority of patients with CLL who are diagnosed newly have early stage disease and do not meet the typical criteria for initiation of therapy. This goes against what is typically taught in, C in other cancers where it is uh, told that if you find cancers early, you can potentially treat them sooner. Whereas here, we would recommend that if you have early stage asymptomatic disease, we will see you in every three to six months and that you do not meet indications for therapy and we do not need to treat your CLL. And this can be quite unnerving to a number of patients where we are told that we would consider this as a wait and watch sort of thing, but that can quickly turn into wait and worry in a number of patients. So what are some of the things that you can do when you are told that you have early stage asymptomatic disease? The first thing I would recommend is that you be seen by at least another physician as a second opinion to establish that this is truly CLL. And you also get your disease profiled to determine what the genetic aspects of the disease are. Typically, we get what is called as a CLL International Prognostic Index in all our patients that have, newly, that have a new diagnosis of CLL. This includes determining what the CLL FISH panel looks like, what the IGVH mutation status looks like, and what the serum beta-2 microglobulin is, in addition to performing a thorough physical examination at the time of diagnosis. This helps us establish the risk profile of the disease that then allows us to counsel our patients as to how fast is their disease likely to progress over the next several years. And while it may feel that you're not doing anything in the watch and wait phase of your disease process, we would recommend that there are actually many things that you should be doing during this phase of your disease process. The first thing that we would recommend is that you meet with a dermatologist on an annual basis, including at the time of diagnosis, because we have seen an increased risk of skin cancers in our patients who have CLL. The other thing we have seen is that because of a defective immune system, our patients with CLL are at an increased risk of developing infectious complications. While we cannot prevent all infections from happening, we would recommend that you get all the age-appropriate vaccinations, including the influenza vaccine, the pneumococcal vaccine, and the inactivated Shingrix vaccine. We typically would recommend that you avoid live vaccines such as the flu mist or the yellow fever vaccine. Finally, we've also seen that our patients with CLL have an increased risk of developing other cancers. Therefore, I would recommend that you meet with your primary care physician to discuss whether you should get your tests done for a mammogram, for pap smears, for colonoscopy, etc., because these are equally important. And the last thing I would recommend is that you continue to follow up with your CLL physician on a regular basis. It is important to know that progression of disease happens not just with symptoms, but also when we test for blood markers to see for evidence of progressive worsening of your white count or development of anemia, which is a low hemoglobin or a low platelet count. But it is also important to be seen because we need to examine you to see if there is any evidence of worsening lymph node enlargement or any evidence of worsening spleen uh, enlargement. And these things would be important to be done on a regular basis and your doctor can best advise you whether they need to see you every three to six months uh, versus once a year over time uh, to look for evidence of progression of disease.